Hello, Bumpy Mix Squiggums here, and it's time to continue with my Let's Play of Wasteland 2. This is episode 31, and we are in the Ranger Citadel for the very first time. Anyhow, guys, I apologize for this whole weekend has been kind of meh for me. So, yeah, I'm a little behind the times. So I was hoping to get this up on Saturday as well. And I'm going to try to get two episodes of Wasteland 2 out per week. Maybe more if I can swing it, but at least two. Two for pretty much every series, and then more for Risen 3, Spryy Wood, and uh, XCOM, of course. And I'm going to try to still fit in a few additional uh, first looks. And, of course, only once a week we're going to have Age of, Wonder through, Age of Wonders 3 updated, so there is that. Alright, anyhow, let's get started. Team Echo, isn't it? Or Team Echo, isn't it? Nice to put a face to a name. I'm Captain Hunter, Team Delta. Alright. Your team doesn't look like the other teams we've met. That's because we're different from the other teams you've met. We're Special Ops. Aren't all Ranger operations special? What makes yours different? Well, let's just say we're Rangers... We're the Ranger team of Vargas calls when other Ranger teams get out of line. Okay. Be seeing you, chum. Alright, chummer. Grenadier Steel Dawn. Halt, who goes the... Oh, it's you. Carry on. Though these massive vault-like elevator doors have been polished to a military-grade shine, you can see small amounts of warping and tiny scuffs like the remnants of scorch marks all around the edges. If you had to guess, the rangers have tried everything from arc-welding torches to C4 to open this behemoth with no success. What about a crowbar? Eh? Huh? Eh? Yeah, you never tried that, did you? Who's this? It's Barry Jackson. And Scorpia, huh? Hey Woodson, what do you hear? Everything, Angela. Everything. Alright. General Vargas is there. Wade Woodson's there. Um let's leave this place behind for right now. Just kind of get a, a feel for what's actually out and about and around this area. Ooh, there's a shop. We like shoppes. Tobias Melson. What's up? The young sergeant has built or has the build and hearty confidence of a born jock. His neck is bigger around than his head, and his biceps strain the sleeves of his tight t-shirt. Sheesh! They haven't even assigned you bunks yet, and already the old man's sent you off on a on a couple do-or-die missions. Well, that's the way it goes in the Desert Rangers these days, I'm sorry to say. So, we better get you kitted out ASAP. Are you ready to equip yourselves, or do you have some questions first? Let's equip. Sure, have a look at what we've got while I get your requisition forms ready. And make sure you choose wisely. Won't last a day out in a waste without proper equipment and water. Alright, ooh, oh, ooh. Okay, I'm done. I did my, my, my crazy sounds. I liked it. It was sweet, sweet, nice. And that is some sick stuff. Oh, look. Oh, my gosh. Look at these red suits. These radiation suits and these redonkulous weapons. Oh, my God. Oh, look. There's a freaking pickaxe. Really? It's a bladed weapon. Oh, heaven. This is what heaven looks like. <laughs> All right. Maybe not. But this is pretty sweet. All right. Let's, um... Do we have anything to sell? I, well, I would assume that we probably have some stuff to sell. How about we do this? Junk. We'll sell all the junk. And let's see what else do we have that we don't need. Um, it's fine. Now well, we can get rid of this. We have a couple coach guns we don't need. Actually, let's just get rid of like almost all of the stuff I want to say. I don't think this is showing us anything that we have equipped. So... Let's get rid of the revolver. Might keep that. Get rid of the carbines. Somebody told me that you could sell a bunch of, of uh, weapon scrap for 
more than you could the actual weapons down the road. So this this may be a, a regret that I'm gonna have later. But for now, we're okay. Why are we only gonna receive oh, because that's our party scrap and that's how much we're gonna receive. I gotcha. Alright, so I think with that we're gonna leave it there. There we go. And now we're gonna go take a look at some of their weapons. Which is gonna be sweet, sweet nice. Alright. So the crowbar is a blunt weapon. Obviously the pipe is a blunt weapon. The combat knife is better than the regular knife. It's a ten to or yeah, ten to fifteen as opposed to a five to ten. We have brass knuckles, which is brawling, don't care about that. These are bladed weapons, can attack diagonally. It's eight to twelve versus ten to fifteen. It's got a much higher, well, it's actually got a lower critical strike chance, but higher critical strike damage. 2.5 uh, damage per AP. This is 4.2. We're going to go with the combat knife. It's actually quite a bit better. There's a laser pistol here, which may be pretty, pretty good. Uh, hold on, we're, we're going to take a look at our sniper rifle next. That seems to be kind of... We just got an upgraded one, if I recall correctly. And this one puts that one to shame. Holy cow. The bullpup sniper rifle is definitely better. Uh, 8 damage versus 4. Oh my gosh. And even with all the modifications we have, it's still not worth it to ho hold on to the other one. So we're going to throw that into the mix. I kind of wish I did this before. Um... Let's see, our pistol, we are using a 38 caliber revolver, really? I thought we had something better on her, I guess not. Um, holy crap, that like trumps it by a billion times. That's a laser pistol, this is, alright, so we have this one here. Actually the revolver is better, how is that possible? Oh, it's 3 AP versus the 4. The revolver is better. I guess I'll keep the revolver. Okay. How does it compare with uh, Rose's ability here? We just had a. We have a bunch of revolvers, don't we? Why don't I do that? There we go. Um, and that leaves the. Pulse energy rifle. Well, oh, shotgun. How could we possibly forget the shotgun? Come on now. Alright, this is a shotgun. It's a lever action shotgun, 12 gauge. How many bullets does it hold? 5 round capacity versus the 2 round. And it does the same as a single shot of the other one. But it has a higher. Damn, ooh, that's, that's pretty nice. And then this one's even. Wow, this one's better. So this is a 5.2, and this is a 6.1. It does less than a single shot, 18 to 34, as opposed to 21 to 28, but it's it's a tighter knit shot. It does the same as the coach, but it has one AP less to do, and everything else is about the same. The difference being it's a wider angle cone, it's got more armor penetration, and it does less on the critical damage. It's 1.6 as opposed to 2.0. This is 2.0. Well, I think I'm going to go with that. Ironically enough. Okay, what else do we have? Assault rifle? M16 assault rifle. Let's see here. We have the HK33 which isn't bad but this thing just destroys its soul M16 is just such a such a better gun um, 37 to 48 I mean that's outrageous okay well let's see what else we can sell Okay, and I think with that, 
we pay 11 for those upgrades yeah I'll take it and then we're going to also we'll, we'll split those up in a minute um, we're definitely gonna need some ammo how about we do this we'll come back and continue to trade with you in a minute goodbye for right now good luck recruits and don't forget to stop the mess hall or stop by the mess hall and fill up your canteens I'm not kidding all right, let's uh, let's open up our our inventory here. Ah, switching games is so so complicated sometimes. All right, so we're looking at four armor versus three. We'll put this on her. Uh, looks like we still have a bunch of stuff we can still get rid of, which is nice. Um, we're gonna swap over his his sniper rifle. I want to say there was some. St what do these do here? Um, four percent chance to hit. I don't think I need that. I've lowered my overall range, so I'm going to sell that and put the shotgun on him, and the M16 on her, and the knife on him. And Bilbo Stabbins is going to be like, "Oh my gosh, I'm so excited! Just can't hide it." All right, so he's got an actual decent weapon finally. They like almost double the damage. Not quite, but almost doubled, which is still not great. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not amazing, but it's eh, it's it's okay. Um she didn't get a pistol upgrade. What is that thing? Well, pistols, blah 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 blah. Um ooh, four ammo capacity. That wouldn't be terrible on a pistol or on a uh a shotgun. Alright, well this gun is definitely better with it, just the one big difference being the less uh, AP cost. I should be able to get an extra shot in every once in a while, and it's got more armor penetration, so. And I suppose we can continue down that and also say that it also has a higher ammo capacity. So, there is that. The M16 is going to replace the new gun that we thought was amazing. And there it is. It has replaced it. And it is sweet, sweet, nice. She does not need uh, that ammo. He needs it. Alright, so... I dare say we can swap these two. Pretty easily. And we can sell that. Alright, so let's go back in and sell these extra guns. Get some more ammo. Hold on. Didn't somebody have something like a trinket that helped with um, buying and selling? Yeah, bartering. So we'll have woman do the trading. That may have helped before, maybe not. I don't know. Who could say? Who could say? And it could be all the way across the board. I mean, it could just be everyone in our party gets that benefit if one person has it. Alright, so we spent a hundred and something of our own money. Actually, I think I'm going to keep that because I think I can remove those things. In addition, let's go to all. Here we go, we can sell this, this, and this. I think that's good. Alright, we can sell that, and we get 336. Let's also get some ammo. We're gonna get, oh, I don't know, 25 or so of those. Don't really need any of those, if I recall correctly. I don't think we need any of any ammo. I think we're actually pretty set. And the M16 still uses the, this kind of ammo? Do we know for sure? Alright, well, we're going to do the trade. We're going to receive some money for it. And we're going to we're gonna say goodbye. I'm sorry, guys. I know this is not the most exciting thing. And I say that every time it, it comes up, but it's true. I, I, and I realize it's not the most exciting thing. We'll hit OK with that. Um... 38. I suppose I could get a few more shotgun shells for him, but what I really wanted to do was get
give this to her and then have her go in here and remove. Okay, that's fine. Remove. Okay, fine. <laughs> we'll strip it for parts. And we got broken weapon parts. Well, so be it. We tried. Um, what else? What else? What else? He's pretty set with all that. What does the duct tape do? Minus one. Oh, attack AP. Hmm. Tempted to use that on on him. Well, that's actually pretty substantial. Um. Maybe on a pistol. I, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna save it for the, like the next tier of item that we get. Okay, I think we're good there. And oh, there's still so many things. There's so many people to talk to on this episode. This could be an entire episode of talking and just trading and just doing various things. I mean, this is kind of interesting, I suppose. Sorry, I'm working here. All quiet. Recruits, huh? Me too. Better see Captain Mercaptain at her drawing board. She always likes to welcome the new kids. Well, there is that, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, let's go talk to, to General Vargas. I kind of wish there was like a rest feature where we just like camp and just recover our health. There's no Captain Mercaptain here? No. Welcome back to the Ranger Citadel, recruits. Can't talk to the Staff Sergeant Scorpia, unfortunately. Sergeant Woodson, or Wade Woodson, one of the most technically minded members of the Rangers. He's wearing a makeshift pair of glasses and is starting to gray at the temples. Welcome, recruits. Nice to make your acquaintance. Good work saving the day and attaching the repeater unit at the uh, units at the Ag Center. The General and I thank you. Now, I'm guessing you're here to learn more about these mysterious broadcasts you've been helping us with. What do you think of General Vargas? Ha, well, I'm not going to say anything bad about the General while, he's, while I'm sitting right next to him, am I? You better not, Woodson. I'll take away your smokes ration. See? But seriously, I, <laughs> I think the General has been a wise and cautious leader these past 15 years. Some of the boys may think he keeps it a little too cautious, but they're not the ones who have to field the calls when good men die. Since we started hearing those strange broadcasts, he's decided that the quiet times are over and his place is here, on air, listening to the people of the wastes and sending troops into battle. Uh, what do you mean, the quiet? Well, we spent the 15 years since we defeated the base, the base Cochise AI retrenching, rebuilding the Citadel, rebuilding our numbers, solidifying our position. It's made us a stronger organization, I think, but we also have a smaller footprint now. And some of the places we used to patrol have kind of fallen off the map. Now, though, I think it's time to wake up. The world is changing. These crazy broadcasts of red scorpions in the old prison, reports of trade routes to the east, where we thought there was nothing but radiation. If the rangers still want to be a force for good in the world, then we, oughta, we gotta start stepping out beyond our own backyard. Alright. Well, I think we're going to not talk to you anymore. We'll talk to you a little bit more next episode. I kind of want to get, like, some advancing, but... I want to keep advancing the storyline, but I, I don't know. There's so much just talking. This is going to be like an entire episode of nothing but babbling. But we did get a lot of really, really cool new gear, so that's kind of neat. A stiff-bearded older man wearing a hard-worn ranger uniform and a battered old cowboy hat. General Vargas walks with a cane, but he's not helpless. He wears a pearl-handed revolver on his hip, and there's a lot of notches on the barrel. So, you saved Axe Center at the expense of High Pool. A tough decision, and I know it must weigh heavily on your minds, but a choice had to be made, and once you chose Axe Center, you did all you could to save it and its people. I am particularly pleased that you went out of your way to help Matt Forrestal. He was a great ranger and remains a credit to our organization now that he's left. Also, let me personally thank you for finding Ace's killer, whatever it was, I'm sorry for your initiation into the Rangers, or that your initiation into the Rangers has been such a trial by fire, but you've proven yourself tough under pressure, and in my eyes, that makes you fit to be a Ranger. You have earned the name. Welcome aboard, Rangers. Now, any questions? Um, I did. I did have some pr questions. Um, crap. 
I don't remember what those questions were. Alright, let's take a look at our um, quest log. There it is. Um, that Ricky Bachowski, a desert ranger who knows where to find rad suits, will get us into Damanta. Last heard, he's arrested for going AWOL and is being held. So, Rick Bark, whatever his name is. Um, nope, none of that helps me. Make us proud, recruits. Yeah, I would, but you're not answering the questions I'm asking. So, there is that. Can we, like, move when I click? Thank you. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on, you can do it. Alright, what do we have in here? Alright. Oh, companions waiting. What is this? You can remove an unneeded or troublesome CNPC. I guess computer controlled and... Uh, I don't know. From your party by selecting the dismiss option on the character screen. A dismissed party member will make their way back to the rooms inside the Ranger Citadel, such as the museum and the mess hall. Here you can recruit dismissed party members. Intriguing. Nice to know. Corporal Jeff Hungerford. A squat old guy with muscular arms, a bandana around his bald head, and a bloody kiss the cook apron around his beer barreled gut. He has an eye patch over his left eye and a voice like a garbage disposal. Right on, brothers. Better grab some of this grub before the rats get in. Ha! Just kidding. Rats don't last long around here. They go into the stew pot just like everything else. Now, what can I get you? Water. Ah, Melson must have sent you. He always sends the new recruits to fill up on water. Well, it's right to it's right there in the, those coolers. Might be the last clean water you see until you get back here. So take plenty and drink it slow. So, uh, your name's Hungry? <laughs> been living with that joke all my life, and it didn't get easier once they made me the cook. Could have been worse. I knew a guy once named Richard Stroker. <laughs> Yeah. What's Sergeant Melson like? Uh, the boy's a menace. Eats twice his share and never shuts up. Knows his stuff, though. He'll steer you right as far as guns and gear goes. Alright. Well, Richard Stroker. Why not? Grenadier Stefan Pate. Not needing to worry about where food's coming from is my favorite thing about being a ranger. All two. Oh, it's you. Carry on. All right. Um, Grenadier Major Aaron Zelek. Hungry knows what he's doing. An old ranger wearing an immaculate uniform stands by one of the cafeteria tables. He salutes you as you approach. I'm Corporal Evan Haku. Haku was it Haku? Uh, one of the recruiters here at the Citadel. I always like to make sure the new kids are settling in. You're doing fine for, uh, um, from all accounts. I'm also the liaison for any volunteers who wish to help out the Rangers on a non-permanent basis. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. Got a minute? I have a minute. Sure, go ahead. Great, so from time to time while you're on patrol you're gonna meet folks who will want to help you out. Most have their own reasons for volunteering a grudge against somebody, an excuse to get out of town, whatever. Well, we welcome them all. Extra hands are always appreciated, but we try to limit the number of volunteers in one ranger team to three. Any more than that, and it's just hard to keep them in line. So, what happens when you've got more volunteers and spots to put them in? You send them to us, that's what. If you want a volunteer to be able to join you later, just tell them to come to the Citadel and we'll take care of them until you're ready. You'll find them here in the mess or around the Citadel enjoying our hospitality. Got it? I got it. Oh, and as an added incentive, I'm authorized to offer you a bonus for every volunteer you recruit. The more you bring in, the higher the bonus you'll receive. Bonus? What kind of bonus? We provide two types of bonuses. The first is a scrap entitlement, which can be used to purchase whatever you want. The second is an accelerated promotion merit, which allows you to raise... Raise? Rise more quickly in ranks. The type of bonus you receive is up to you. We found a possible recruit. Good work. What's their name? Oh. Can we get credit for Angela? Haha, <laughs> that's a good one, recruits. 
Captain Death's been here ever since I was a recruit myself. I'm not saying she's old or anything. I would never say that. She'd kill me. Okay, what about Rose? Excellent. A lot of teams forget that it takes more than raw strength to survive in the wastes. You've got you gotta have some brains too. So what type of enlistment bonus would you prefer? Hmm. I wanna say a promotion. Bam, some experience. Alright. A fine choice. I'll annotate the merit in your promotion record. Okay. Well that's that's pretty cool. I like that. That's a pretty neat thing. You know what guys? This has actually been a pretty interesting but also relatively productive um, episode or mission or whatever. I guess it's going to be an episode. But unfortunately there's going to be no combat and there's not much I can do about that guys. It looks like we're going to spend a little bit of time walking around and talking to the different folks in the, well, the Ranger Citadel until we figure out exactly what everyone has to say and where we can go from here. Plus we still have to find the guy in the quote unquote prison area. But that's pretty much going to do it for this one. I apologize, guys, if it wasn't action-packed enough. You can blame the developers, not me. You have to come to the Citadel at some point, and when you do, well, you see what's going down. Lots of Juju Magumbo. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, I'll leave that up to you. Until the next time, folks, my name's Bumpy McSquiggums, and I will see you later.